unregularradio.com. Boston, best online radio. Back live, two hotheads where activism happens. And uh, in the studio, we still have Casey Mackey sitting in with us uh-huh. from BU, Boston University. We got Spencer over here, and we got a couple uh, other folks sitting in. Scott's recording some video, and uh, Dave Crespo, the man, one of the owners of this uh, station here. That is the truth. Sitting is is behind the board. Yeah, we're very lucky to have him. I'm lucky to be here. No, we're lucky to have you. I just mean in general. That's true. This is a good place. It is a good place, isn't it? It's exactly where we should be, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we have uh, someone very special holding on the phone for us. Very exciting to have her back on the show. She just came out to Boston this last weekend for the big Boston Freedom Rally. Uh, she, as, as we were talking about earlier, her husband is in federal jail for selling seeds. And uh, the DEA in their press release did uh, admit that it was basically for political reasons, because of the activism and the work that he was doing. So uh, very exciting to have her back. And this week, last weekend at the Boston Freedom. Hello, Jody Emery. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me back. Oh, we're, we, we always love to have you on our show. Um, Heather's not here today, but we have Casey here, and she's kind of sitting in throughout the day, and she's really good. I, I definitely want you guys to say hello to each other, because she was also a Freedom Rally speaker, Jody. Oh, hey, Casey. Hey, Jody. I really wish I'd seen your speech. I was recruiting SSDPers all day. Uh, see, there's important stuff to be doing, and you were out there doing it, so <laughs> that's great. I'm sure it's on video somewhere at some point, but if not, you can always Google my name and find any speech from any other time. Uh, the message stays the same. It's the message of freedom and ending prohibition, yeah. but I'm sorry we didn't get to meet. <laughs> And if there's not video, there will be soon enough because I'm going to uh, bribe someone at the station. They we they recorded all the audio from the main stage, so they definitely have your speech, Jody. And if 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 it doesn't get out there, I'm going to actually bribe someone, get the audio, and put it up with some nice pictures. So <laughs> it will be out there. Oh, I nice guarantee nice. you that. Um, w- tell us about your freedom rally, though, because we want to hear about what you thought and how it went for you. Well, it was awesome to be able to attend this year. I wasn't able to go last year because I was visiting Mark in federal prison. But this year I was available, and it was so nice to be able to go out east again. I'd been out there earlier this year to go to the New Hampshire uh, Liberty Forum where I spoke, and I already met some of you guys, and it was fantastic then. But this time it was beautiful weather, huge crowds. I had no idea what to expect, to be honest. So when I showed up and it's this gigantic park, um, I was just blown away. I didn't even get to see all of it. I hardly had time to walk around. Um, We did have a tent. A friend of mine from Rhode Island, Keith Leach, helped man the tent, and we sold a couple different shirts. Unfortunately, the free mark T-shirts did not arrive. (laughs) But a lot of people still came by to offer their great words of support and say sweet things about Mark and me, and I really enjoyed meeting all those people. It was fantastic. Were there a lot of people asking for that free mark shirt? Yeah, there were a lot, but... I was asking for it. Cannabisculture.com slash store. You can get it free shipping in North America. Oh, really? (laughs) It's a little... It, it is up. Mm-hmm. It is up on online, so you can buy it right off cannabisculture. dot com. Yep, absolutely. Oh, I have to buy one. I have to get one. <laughs> I should just. I just send you one. <laughs> you all, yeah. You know, I I want to buy one. I think that's you know that's why I wanted to do that day. But I, I you know, that's what the shirt I really want. So I'm 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 gonna buy it online. Oh, that's that's really sweet because it definitely helps. That I mean, Mark can't really work besides his prison job. At, Sixteen dollars a month, and I've got to look after him and me. So, um, it definitely helps out a lot when people support our business because that's what keeps me and him both fed and safe and sound, uh, especially him. So, definitely appreciate all of that. And there, there was some uh, news I think this week through your your uh, Jody Emery show on YouTube that you post about Free Mark Emery that you weren't even aware of. Tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, we got uh, an email from a good friend of ours who told me that he had heard Mark's name mentioned in our parliament, which is, of course, like the U.S. Congress for Canada. And our parliament has a petition presenting time period where members of parliament are given petitions by their constituents to present in parliament. And I suppose some people living in a conservative riding, which is similar to a Republican down there, 
Uh, they organized petitions. They gave them to their member of parliament, Mr. J. Askin, I think his name was, and he presented them in parliament, and that's a conservative. So I was planning on sending him a note saying that while he may not agree with what my husband has done, selling the seeds to finance legalization efforts, I do appreciate that he's doing the job he's been hired to do, which is to represent the concerns and the desires of his constituents. So I always think it's important to thank those in office who help us out, whether they like us or not, <laughs> if they do something for our people, for freedom, for liberty of any kind, they do deserve our thanks in that regard. Wow, that's great news. It's good to hear. Because uh, yeah. he, he shouldn't be. I mean, this is, this point, it's, it's just gotten ridiculous that, that he is still sitting in prison under Obama. I mean, I, I just, I just wish, yeah, I know that it's almost like at this point you're halfway through with the ordeal, but it's, it just drives me crazy. I just, I just sit there. I just don't understand why we're paying all this money to have Mark sit in prison. It just, he should not be in prison. It just drives me crazy. I'm going to keep saying it over and over again, but it just does. I can imagine uh, how you feel about it. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people, for us, we're very fortunate because people know who Mark is and they are outraged by what's happened to him. But Mark and I always try and remind people that there are so many more out there that don't have any sort of support whatsoever, especially nothing like what Mark and I are so fortunate to receive. So he, you know, he's just taking a punishment that's a taste of what Americans and people worldwide even, but particularly Americans, suffer under the war on drugs and the incarceration nation that they live in. So while Mark will be coming home, we know that there are so many who won't, and that's really the greatest injustice here. I mean, it, it was absolutely an assault on our sovereignty of our country to have Mark taken out of our home country when he never even went to the United States to be charged down there in a foreign country and get taken to that foreign country to face unjust punishment that of course is offensive and a lot of canadians that's what really outraged them about it but again we know that mark was a figurehead he was a leader the dea said it like it was he gave millions of dollars to the movement they thought it was a significant blow to legalization efforts to take him down so he was using civil disobedience and knowing that there was likely punishment to come with it because that's part of civil disobedience when you're peaceful and you break unjust laws you have to be willing to accept punishment if it comes because the purpose is to demonstrate how unjust the laws are so mark was ready for that he's able to get through it but there are so many people who suffer far worse and those are the ones we're really trying to fight for those are the ones that really can't be forgotten so when people out there are free and are available to do any sort of activism, they really should with those prisoners in mind because they're the ones who need our help the most and all the future prisoners that are still out amongst us right now who one day may suffer under these laws. So that's what we've got to focus on is getting rid of these unjust laws entirely. And that's definitely been Mark's mission in life and definitely is mine right now. Amen on that. Yeah, the uh, keeping prisoners in mind is really, really important. I actually um, have a prisoner pin pal through this organization called Black and Pink, which is um, hooks people up with LGBT, LGBTQ um, prisoners, um, okay. is working to abolish the prison industrial complex. And um, it's really great. I learned that um, one of my friends at first thought like, oh, writing prisoners is such a waste of time. You should like write your grandparents instead. And like... As much as it's important for me to keep in contact with my family, I think that, like, it's also really valuable to write letters to people in prison, that their lives are better by, like, getting those letters, not just from, like, the joy they get from getting a letter, but just that the guards treat them better, other inmates treat them better, because they see that, like, someone from the outside world cares about them, so maybe they're not subhuman. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's something that I've found has really helped me to like writing a letter is a really great discovery process and you're really helping someone in the process. Speaking of that, does Mark get enough letters? Yeah. Oh, he definitely, he definitely does. He gets a lot of mail and he tries to write back to everybody. He has a rule that he set for himself that if somebody writes him a letter and he wants to write them back, 
It can't be any fewer than four full handwritten pages, which takes at least an hour. So he wants wow. to make sure everybody gets a great response, but that does take a lot of time. And while he is, of course, in a place where he's got nothing but time, it would seem odd that he couldn't get back to everyone, but he's really busy with his bass guitar playing. He just loves music so much. That's really making life much better for him in there. So that's what he does a lot of his, uh, a lot of his time is spent doing that, playing music. And people can definitely check out his music song lists and see what kind of tunes Mark Emery, the Prince of Pot, is I was checking some of those out. That was very, he's got uh, a lot of, uh, Old school classic rocker, as I would say. Oh, right? yeah. Like, yeah like, <laughs> For sure. No, it's great. It's all music. I look forward to hearing him play when he gets home, too. So we'll see Mark Emery and Tommy Chong have a jam session. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can't wait to see that on YouTube. And that, yes, <laughs> that's the day we're looking forward to. Um, so the, the, uh, one of the things on the Freedom Rally this year is, you know, it is two stages and there's so much to see. A lot of us, have missed, we were talking about it today, that we missed a lot of the speeches and a lot of the things we wanted yeah. to see. What were you, some of your, like, you know, walking around and talking to people, any favorite moments or favorite speeches or anything that really pops to your mind that was like a great moment for you at the Freedom Rally? I think just the reception that I got was wonderful because, you know, I'm out on the West Coast and... Lots of people out here know about Mark, maybe more than out east, even though he is uh, recognized worldwide. But when I go out east, I'm not surrounded by a lot of the same familiar faces, and so I'm not sure um, who I know or who I don't. And to have so many people come up and say hi and to tell me their Twitter name or their Instagram name or Facebook or how they know me that way, um, getting that sort of feedback was really comforting. It's a reminder that people really do care and for me, it's nice to have that so I can tell Mark, because when he's behind bars, he does get to hear from a few people through letters, and he talks to me every day on the phone for 10 minutes. I can tell him about what people say and all the wonderful words of support, because he never really gets to see that when he's in there. I get a lot of the support people are sending to him, so when I receive that from people, I'm able to let him know that he's not forgotten, that somebody said they got these different seeds from him and they helped so much for their sickness. And he all sorts of stories that I can pass along to remind Mark he's not forgotten, he's not disappearing, people still know and they still care. But I have to say I was also very pleased to see Judge Jim Gray again. Yeah. Uh, I heard, of course, people were there with him tonight out there and he's working hard with Gary Johnson for the presidential and vice presidential run for office and he was really sweet to me again he recognized me from seattle hemp fest and offered to carry my tent and uh, was just asking about mark and i think it's great when you have politicians who are excited to be out amongst the people you know they don't feel like they're in a different world and he's a great guy so if anybody can't stomach obama or romney definitely throw your vote to the libertarian party with gary johnson and judge jim gray hallelujah and, uh, yeah that is like, uh, yeah, we hung out with him today, and it, he is like an overachiever. I love Judge Jim Gray. He's like <laughs> always challenging you. He, he reminds me of like one of those, like I, I was an athlete in high school and all that, and it, he reminds me of like one of my coaches, like, you know, you got to do it right. You know, like, I just love that guy. He's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And he wanted so, to carry your oh, tent. Did, he, did you let him carry your tent out of there? Oh, I, 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 he came up behind and just kind of grabbed it out of my hand. And I said, oh, and noticed it was him. And he said, oh, I'll help you with that. And I said, oh, gosh, well, we got a bit of a ways to go. He said, no, no worries. And we just walked a bit and then realized that we were going in the wrong direction. So I told him, I told him just to continue onwards and, uh, and thanked him very much. And I went back the other way with Keith to get to the car. So, but no, he's super sweetheart. And, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't get to hear many speeches because I was at the tent the booth, yeah. and taking care of uh, talking to people all the time. But I did get to walk around and see so many people. Oh, and the 420, of course. Oh, yeah. Can't forget that. I'm, I'm on the tent and we hear the big roar. We see the countdown. Everybody's counting down. But just the sound of people's voices, just that roar of sound coming up over the hill and then this big cloud coming with it. It was a sight to see. That was It was amazing. Incredible. Amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. I could feel the heat of the smoke this year. It was just like, wow. Yeah, that was, it was an incredible moment. 
Always. Yeah, it's just nice to see so many people that are enthusiastic about the culture and being educated about, you know, fighting prohibition. Because I always feel that rallies and festivals are twofold. A lot of it is about celebrating the cannabis culture, which is our music and our art and everything else that we celebrate and use and enjoy. But there's also the protest against prohibition. And that's really important to remember because... As we get a lot of progress with medical marijuana and a lot of different expos and sort of events going on, it can be really easy to kind of forget that people are still being arrested every second of every day, you know, and that this drug war still continues and people's lives are being destroyed every minute of every day. And when you're at those events while you're celebrating cannabis, you have to remember it's also a protest. It's about people power and getting our message out there through the strength of numbers. So... Always remember to wear both hats when yeah, you're absolutely. out there celebrating. And I gotta <laughs> and say, you guys at MassCan did an amazing job, by the way, getting the message out there about question three. All of that is fantastic. It makes me so happy to see the American people taking charge because we are suffering here in Canada. And we need you guys to help save us. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it was nice to see that you endorsed question three. It was like I, it means a lot to me to see that Jody Emery has officially endorsed question three in Massachusetts. It was good to have that happen. Um, I just want to ask another question about uh, Canada. You're working with uh, Dana Larson and a group of activists out there. I think it's Sensible... What, what's the name of the new group? Sensible that- BC. Yep, it's this new referendum being planned for about two years from now. See, up in Canada, we don't have states' rights. We don't have similar to what you guys have for states' rights. So we don't Everything here is done pretty much federally. All the drug laws are federal. Everything is done with the federal government, which actually means we do have federal police, our standing military, the RCMP. They're all across Canada. So we've got our own little friendly form of dictatorship up here. But (laughs) what we've got when it comes to changing laws for each province, there are some provinces with referendums, and it's kind of like initiatives or propositions. What we'll have is... um, signature gathering and we've got to get 10 percent of signatures from every riding in our province and all we can really do because we can't change the drug laws what we can do is say that as a province we refuse to give police the budgets used for possession and marijuana cases simple marijuana cases because unfortunately we, uh, we don't have the mechanisms or the state's rights type things to change those laws that way. We can't really do provincial medical marijuana. We have federal medical marijuana. So a lot of stuff we aren't able to do, but defunding the police of their money in our province for possession cases is something we're able to do. And that's going to take a whole lot of work. That's why we have started with two years in advance to start organizing, networking, getting a lot of support. And we do have political office holders on our side and a lot of really great mainstream um, anti-prohibition organizations. So the momentum is growing up here because the drug war is getting worse up here. So as the government gets worse in fighting against us, we get stronger in using whatever means we can get to fight back. And this referendum, Sensible BC, is that sort of thing. So if anyone wants to check out what that's about, they can go to sensiblebc.ca And on this Monday night, I'm actually going to be at a panel where we have a mayor of a city and a serving police officer who's the head of law enforcement against Prohibition Canada, as well as many others, a member of our legislature. They're going to be at this panel to talk about Sensible BC and decriminalization and legalization. So we'll be streaming that live on pot.tv, www.pot.tv, and covering it for cannabisculture.com, because that's our dear friend holding this organization up and getting things going and... We all have to support anybody we can stomach to support. You know, yeah. so you don't need to stand next to your haters or whatever, yep. but work with everybody else that you can. Absolutely. To move us forward. And I, I've been following Dana, his work for a while. I mean, he's really made inroads with some of the national parties. Is it the National yeah. Democratic Party he's been working with? Yeah, we've got the NDP provincially and federally. He ran for the leadership bid of the BC NDP, so that's kind of like our state political party uh he ran to the leadership convention all the way to the end and did very well and he's a known pot advocate he has medical marijuana dispensaries 
But people can go to DanaLarson.com to check it out. And he's also the author of Harry Pothead, uh, one of the books that are a parody spoof about Harry Potter. See, I didn't know that. I had no, yeah, because I I know Dana from, I'm like the political geek. I know him from, like, with his run. You know, I watched that. I thought that was fascinating. He got a national television or a regional television, whatever it was. He did a good job, but I didn't know he was the Harry Pothead guy. That's Yeah, he was the editor of Cannabis Culture Magazine when it started and up until 2005 when Mark and I took over. And he's been a great activist and friend since. He's helped out a lot of different people with medical marijuana efforts and dispensaries. So we've got a good team of people up here. We're all just got to work our butts off before we face any more trouble from this government because it's not good up here. Again, that's my plea to you Americans. Please, please, end the drug war there because we need to stop it from getting worse here. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the, yeah. you know, a lot of people too, they, I, I they, we, we do have to wrap up, but, you know, I, I see this constant, uh, people want to put you on a pedestal, Jody, and then they want to think that you're, you're saying things and meaning things that you don't say and do. And you tell them, you're telling people exactly why you want us to legalize in Massachusetts and other states. I, I just don't I, don't, I don't get it. You, you are so honest and forthcoming with your words. And I just want to, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your activism. Thank you for being one of the best spokespersons we could ever have oh, in this movement. God. We love you, Jody Emery. <laughs> Boston so loves you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's right. super super kind. <laughs> I just keep going because I get lots of encouragement from people. So we'll all just hold each other up. You know, we're all in it together. That's the truth of it, whether we like it or not. We either sink or, sink or swim together. And I'm just going to keep thrashing my arms around as much as I can. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for Jody. Woo! Woo! You guys have a great night. And definitely everybody listening, make sure you support MassCan and vote yes on question three. Make sure you're registered to vote. That's really important. You don't want to show up and not be registered. So do whatever it is, a simple Google search, how do I register to vote, and get that done. Because you have a voice that you're able to use, and a lot of people don't anymore. So you owe it to them. Get out there and vote. Yes on question three. Yes on question three. Thank you very much. That was Jody Emery from CannabisCulture.com. And she leaves us on a great point. We're out of time. But get registered to vote. You know where you do it? You go to your town or city hall. There's a clerk in every city and town hall. Go sign up 9 to 5 pretty much, Monday through Friday. Some of them close on Fridays, but just look it up on your website. You know, look up your town hall government. It's on It's on the Internet. You can find out the hours. Just go down there, fill out the paperwork, get registered. Just do it. Just do it. You heard Jody. <laughs> you support Jody, get registered. She's asking you to do something here in Massachusetts. We need to legalize this medical marijuana. It's the least you can do. A great week. I want to thank everyone. Thank <laughs> Dave Crespo behind the board. He did a phenomenal job. The music was awesome. Thank you. He, he, he weighed in and with some great... I just try to give people some, you know, great the, insights. Uh, well, I, you know, maybe you like the opposite of insight. It's no, like, no, no. You, you gave opened. some good insights. <laughs> I it should say like, great, some good insight. I just try to bring it down to the you know, the beginner's level for, yeah. for a lot that's of what I That's what I never do. Person. I go way over. I, I, I'm sorry? The lay person. Yes. That's what, thank you. Layman's terms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for the average listener. Yeah. You know, there's people who doesn't, not, not everyone knows and they want to know. So, yeah. but I, I totally know Jody Emery. Uh, I think we all do now. Yeah. I mean, after last she's week, quite attractive too. I was I was looking her up. Oh on yeah, the internet. yeah. She's. She, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> we have. Uh, I want to thank Casey Mackey for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. You are awesome today, Casey. Thank you so much for coming in. And uh, we got Spencer over here. Thank you for having me. And what's Mike. your friend's name again? Say his name. This is Cody. Cody, say hi. Because, Cody, you told me your name early, and I don't remember it, and I'm a goof, so say, say something about my can. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Cody's been here the whole time. Thank you, Cody, for coming in. And uh, we're on regular radio. We're way over our time. Two hotheads where activism happens. Hey, we can do that this week with the Freedom Rally, Jody Emery. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with another big show, and uh, we'll see you next week. Unregularradio.com.